DIY coffee mug wall rack. That's Zoe. Hey girl. I'm using Minwax wood finish in dark walnut. If I'm halfway decent with these videos, maybe one day I'll clean and organize this workshop in one. Because this whole basement is a hot mess. I have pretty much everything I need. So I'm taking this one by two and cutting it to yeah, it was 23 and a half, which ended up being wrong. I should have planned better. I thought maybe I'd be able to pull all the stickers off, but um, I gave up pretty quickly. These white wood boards are pretty smooth to start with. I just wanted to smooth them all down, make sure I rounded my edges, and fix any splintering. This is where things get really fancy. Yes, those are small garbage bags. Sometimes you just gotta make it work, you know? I keep a mental note of what the pretty side and the ugly side of my wood is. So when I do a thin coat of stain like this, it dries pretty quickly and I can flip it onto the ugly side because it's going on the back. So if there's any imperfections in the stain, you're not gonna see it. It's the next day and my stain is dry. So I'm just laying it out how it'll kind of look, but this is with the pretty side down. Wood glue is stronger than any nail or screw you can use. And because this rack is gonna hold 48 coffee mugs, plus the weight of all the wood, I wanted to make sure it wasn't budging. So the process is glue, clamp, nail, wipe all the excess glue with a damp rag. I sanded and stained all of my boards prior to assembly because it is a big pain to try to sand in all of those corners, but it's even a bigger pain to try to sand all the wood glue out of those corners. You never get it all, even if you're wiping, and the glue doesn't absorb stain the same as wood, so you get color imperfections as your end result. So I realized I didn't math right when I cut the wood the first time. So I'm taking off another inch and a half uh, to account for both of the edge pieces instead of just one. I taped the edges of the wood before I recut them to prevent splintering so I wouldn't mess up my stain job. For the side support pieces, I measured in nine inches from the edge and used my speed square to square it up, glued, nailed uh, like usual, and make sure I'm cleaning that glue off quickly every time. I'm repeating that process on the other side, making sure it's 
nine inches and it's square and I'm having to adjust, adjust and measure and square quite a bit, but they say measure twice and cut once. So like measure twice and nail once maybe. And it still wasn't perfectly square, but we don't have to be perfect to be beautiful. I'm using the one by four to get my spacing right, just so I don't have to do all the squaring and measuring like I did before. This made it a lot easier. Sometimes clamping when you have a lot of glue, it'll like shift the wood. So I just popped one little nail in to keep it where it's supposed to be and then use the clamp to like squeeze it down. I was too lazy to get a scrap one by four to measure this side. So I just measured with measuring tape and made sure the edges were even to tell me it was square. Well, hey dude. Just a little extra security, popping some nails in the back side. So now I have some going in the front and some going in the back. I just use a satin clear coat spray to seal in the stain. And I did do this on both sides. Just let it dry in between, of course. I'm marking a dot every two inches and just using the width of the tape as my guide from the edge. These hooks have a little spike at the bottom and I'm putting that spike directly on the pencil mark I made so I don't have to measure how far away from the edge they are every single time. Here's the finished beauty. I don't have enough coffee mugs to fill this, but I think her new mom does. Thank you so much for watching my very first video. Like, share, and subscribe so I'll make more.